Stephanie Otobo. So first of all, I want to say this is not a black male at all. This is a legal right of breach of promise of marriage. It is not a black male. And we are petitioning the police to go through the records of my bank records to check how he sent money directly from his account to my account apart from the cash that he gives me like a lot of cash that he gave me i'm not talking about eight thousand euro i'm not talking about twelve thousand dollars in two weeks you know if i was a cheap prostitute how much do you send a cheap prostitute all the way from nigeria to canada I live, I base in Canada. And there were a lot, I'm sure there are a lot of women that need money here in Nigeria. Like how many, how many people has he sent money to? How many women or cheap prostitutes has he sent money to here in Nigeria? You know? So we are, I am petitioning, the, we are petitioning the police on that. And also the issue of the Photoshop pictures. You know, in between the Photoshop pictures, there should be an original copy if there was if, if the pictures were photoshopped, it should be photoshopped from something, right? Like the, where the manipulation came from. He should provide that because I have the cell phone that I use to take the pictures. I still have every original pictures of those pictures. And also the police should check his, the private pictures he sent me about his penis and all that. The police should check him and check the pictures. I believe every man has different kinds and I have pictures with his hand holding it. His hand should be different from every other man's hand, right? He should, he should clarify himself on these issues, you know? So also the police should check my passport. He took me to Napoli. He had a program there, a conference for three days. We should check his the police should check his passports, the period they were stamped to Napoli, and check my passports, the period I was stamped to Napoli, if it wasn't the same, if I was just a cheap prostitute, he was helping. Also, based on what he has released today, that um, my lawyer, Barrister Keyamo, is trying to kill me and blame it on him. This is just a cheap uh, political lie. This is not politics. This is real and he should wake up and face the truth, you know? Also, um, I want the police to check on the issue of when he gave me substance to drink and that's almost cost me my life. This was what happened. This was one of the main reasons that really caused all of this. It gave me substance to when after I got pregnant, it gave me substance to drink and I started bleeding, stooling blood for over one year. That almost cost me my life. I was bleeding for so long. I was so scared. And I lost the baby. So that was an abortion from a pastor, an apostle. He should talk on that too also. What is the size of this mama? Straight to the point. Well, um, I don't know. Is it big? Is it small? You have seen it. Well, it's not very small. It's just uh, an average size. You told me that uh, when, you went, when you went to Napoli, you gave you 8,000 euros. Yeah. I want to know, how did that trip come about? Did you fly together? Did he send you the tickets? He sent me $6,000. To your account? It, no, um, because he sent me to Canada, so he had to go through process. And that can also be checked out because I still have the person contact. That person is his job to send money here and there. So he's, I'm sure he still has everything intact. We should check his record. He so sent me like money. Yes. Okay. So they give me, they tell you, they give you an account here in Nigeria. They tell you the, the difference. You put the money and they give you dollar in Canada in cash. So when I was when I had so much cash on me and I didn't need money, then I tell him to send money to my Nigerian account, you know, because he was just giving me so much. I had enough on me. I said, okay, 
you still want to give me send it to my Nigerian account and he he's done that over three times and the the, the police should check the record is right in the bank UBA account how many countries did you visit together throughout the course of your relationship you told me of Napoli, you told me you flew to Europe and America. I want specific countries. Specific countries you took you to. Okay, um, we were at New York together. We were at. Uh, this, this was. June. After I left Napoli, it was like two months after. So we went to New York together. After that, I visited because um, America is very close to Canada, very close. After that, we met here in Nigeria. He invited me to Nigeria, that's it. In Nigeria, we met more than two times, like especially here in Nigeria, right? And if we meet physically three times, it doesn't mean it's one day. Like in straight three days, we'll spend the time together. It's straight four days, you know, like one week, there about. Okay, okay, um, Ikeja, Proti Hotel in Ikeja. And uh, there, there's one hotel, I don't remember the name, after airport or hotel, there's a gas station, then there's a street after the gas station. There's a new hotel on your right. Yeah. yeah, that was where he gave me something to drink. I thought it was juice. He brought it, he said, let's drink together. He, then the next thing, he didn't want to drink, he wanted to eat. After I went to the gas station, this street that goes by the street, that links I John, that links there, I I don't know Lagos that much. Okay, then I want to ask you another question. The night he gave you the 8,000 euros, I don't know. How, it's so much money. So, so much. What, is, what different thing did you do? What is it you did that made him give you that 8,000 euros in the middle Yeah, and because he was. Well, he was trying to show me that this was real and it will never end. He was trying to, I think he was trying to capture me both physical and spiritual and mentally, you know? Giving someone so much money, you're trying to capture them so without you, they cannot live because you want to make yourself their God. That's what he was trying to do. So when he gave, he was like, okay, this was all I realized today. Here you go, on the table. You, so then he said, this is how much I love you. After the crusade? After the three days crusade. All the money you made at the crusade? That was what, yeah, he collected it. Um, I waited inside, someone came and brought something, and the person left, and he just brought all the money out and said, this is all I realized. And then, then, then when, in the course of your stay together, when is it that none of his members saw you, or nobody came into the hotel, or no one knew you were around? The only person, the only time someone came was when they brought the money. When they brought the, the money. money. He told me this was the script. So there was no, it, we couldn't even call a taxi in the morning when he wanted to discharge me. He had to take a walk with me from his hotel by 4 a.m to my hotel. I was worried because it could be dangerous, you know, in a place where I don't know, in a new country and everything. So he walked me to my hotel and stayed till 6, 7 a.m. and went back to his hotel. He said, because we have to be discreet, we cannot call a taxi or anything. So. But what do you do I'm a singer. I'm a singer. I'm an entertainer. I went to school, I'm done school, so I went into the music industry. You can go online on YouTube and watch Kimura Dadiva music. Immediately I landed in Lagos, my laptop was taken from me, and I called him and I begged him, and I even promised that nothing was there about him. He was like, he's done. Yeah, I believed he sent someone to steal my laptop. And I called them and I begged him that, you said it's over. And I'm, I was still even stolen blood. Like I didn't want to get anything to do with him. I was trying to have a life at the same time, protect myself from him. Then, well, they stole my laptop and I cried all day, even the hotel, I still knew about it. Like I was frustrated for the whole time I was in Nigeria. It was really crazy for me. I still have the phone, the cell phone I used. Oh, and the message is not stolen before? No. Not stolen. Mm -mm. What he does is if he fights with you, he makes sure he does something that would really piss you off. Like 
you know, I didn't know all of this was gonna happen. I was thinking, okay, let me just get rid of this guy. You know, I mean, women, you understand when you're trying to get rid of your boyfriend. You delete his number, everything, you right? So over the years, when we, whenever I want to get like forget about him, I just try to delete everything. You know, it was when why when I was suspecting something was going on. That was when I started taking just last year. I was started taking uh, Snapchat. Um, yeah, screenshots. Yeah, I started keeping evidence. I'm like, what is going on? I'm bleeding too much. You are pretending that you weren't. I mean, everything was getting too much. So you are, you are now asking the police to go to the service provider. And yes, we draw and also and yes, and also check with his manhood and every evidential pictures I have that was not photoshopped from the original phone that it was taken with. And he sent it to me. The hotel, even in Napoli. Okay, how coincidentally this is, um, his passport has the same stamp going to Napoli as mine. A cheap prostitute was just trying to help. How? Why? Do you have a restaurant? I never, I don't have no restaurant, no business going on right now apart from my music. So... Okay, You also feel that you are a stripper in Canada. If I was a stripper, he was the one that sent me to stripping. We, there was a time we talked about it, and he asked me, "Can you? You are so pretty. Can you go do that?" And so I won't spend. I thought he was kidding. I won't spend a lot of money anymore. So you will just get money from there, but nobody will touch you. Only me. Then we laughed about it. I don't know what. Why? You see, a man of God. Like, why would why would that even come out of your mouth? Why would you be joking around with the stripping or stripper stuff? Like. I don't get it. I think more personal things you told me. Aside the fact that you told me that his wife no longer sexually attentive. I think other personal things you told me, maybe like his relationship or his family, something we can hold on to, something he cannot deny. Um, I don't really get into people that much. I don't want to talk, but I know he can. I focus more on me and him, like. I wouldn't, if I'm prognosing, I don't think I will last with him that long. I don't say things that I respect people, I don't say things that I shouldn't say. So, but I know he can't eat whenever, I, because I can say things that I saw during spending time with him. I know, he, I don't know, he can't eat, eat, he has like, I don't know, you know when <laughs> the wicked run away, no one pursued them. He just can't, he's worried, like he's always worried. He can't eat, he wants me to pet him to eat, then I beg him, Daddy, please eat. Then he goes, I love you so much. You know, and we talk, I just try to make him, he can't really eat. I noticed that about him. And um, yeah, the most of the time we spend together, we have sex, so. Yeah, well, um, I refuse to have threesome with him because I'm not a lesbian and I don't like women touching me. Are you aware of your He told me, yeah, he did it with all his past girlfriends that I was the only one that is very rude, that can't do that with him. Did he mention names? I don't know if I want to involve anybody right now. So. Did he mention he told me his ex-girlfriend Daniela Okeke, some actress girl. So how can you describe his strength? Yeah, is he very good? He's very good and he likes to end it off on the back. Um, on your back, yeah, all the time. Oh I don't know why. That's all the time. He likes the back. No, end it off. End it off end it off and also even while sleeping he doesn't want to stop he's dozing off it goes continue continue i go daddy you're sleeping yeah he doesn't want to stop he, he wants to keep going while sleeping that's how much